Hi guys, this is Jordan with Motion Array, and today we're going to go over a technique that you can hopefully use very frequently, as long as you shoot outdoors. Today, we're going to learn how to do a classic sky replacement. Sky replacements are incredibly powerful. It allows you to either create an impossible world or simply enhance the visuals so that they reach a new level of quality. Today, for our example, we're going to be sticking with a classic sky replacement. So open up After Effects and let's work on saving our sky together. So here we are inside of After Effects. And what we have here is a typical scene where we have our subject and a sky that looks a little bit underwhelming. There's basically two scenarios that you'll tend to see when it comes to working with sky. You can have what we have here, which is just something that you want to spruce it up a little bit. And then there's the sky that's completely blown out. Both of these situations can have multiple different approaches, but today we're going to go over that first option and show you how to tackle it. The first thing that you want to do is drop your footage into your new composition. If you're only using a portion of your clip for your final project, it's a good idea to trim it down already here, as you're going to be working with some effects that analyze the entirety of your clip that's in your composition. You can also trim your composition to your work area just to make things a little bit easier. So here's where we start, just a normal shot with a plain sky. The first step is to track your scene. The reason we do this is because we need to tell our fake sky later on how to react and move around so that it looks like it's in the same scene. Our footage is not shot on a tripod, it's handheld, so it would look really weird if the sky was staying still and the rest of the scene was moving around. To track your footage, we need to highlight it and then go down to the tracker here. If your tracker isn't here, then go to Window and select Tracker. Now go to Track Camera and the process will begin. I would suggest choosing Detailed Analysis under the Advanced Settings to give your track the best chance of getting the results that you want. It may take a while depending on the length and the quality of your video, but once it's done, you should see that all these tracking points are around your footage. Choose tracking points on an object that's not moving. So for example, our subjects here in the foreground would be a bad choice, and the mountains in the background would be a good choice. Because we're also putting in a sky that's going to be really far away from us technically, it's a good idea to choose tracking points that are far away from your camera. So the way we select our tracking points is by clicking and dragging a circle around the tracking points that you want. If you're having trouble interacting with these markers, check to see if your layer controls are selected by going to View, Show Layer Controls. Once you've highlighted them, and when you right click, you have a few options. The traditional method is to choose Null and Camera, but I prefer to use a Solid and Camera. When you choose that, you should see a Solid pop up, and depending on its size, you may need to play around with it to actually see how it's interacting with your environment. We're pretending that it's far off in the distance, so let's see how it reacts compared to some of these clouds over here for example. It's pretty good, and we can see that it passes our big test here when our camera pans over to the right. So for the time being, this is really good. The next step is to bring in our image of the sky that we want to replace this with. For me, I got this image from a site called Unsplash, which has royalty free images that have been generously donated by creators. I chose this image because I like how the clouds look and they're similar to the very few clouds that are already in my shot. Now that we have the shot of our new sky, drop it beneath your original footage. And for the time being, we're going to lower the opacity of our original footage so that we can see both images at the same time. From here, select the 3D option for your clouds, located here, and then pick whip the cloud layer to our tracking solid here. Now what you should see is that your image of clouds are sticking to the footage, and it looks like it's following the camera motion. But we have a problem. Our footage looks like it's jiggling around everywhere. The reason it's doing this is because we've placed it too close to our theoretical camera. The simple solution to this is we need to move this object back in Z space as far back as we can. To do this, go to the drop down on your clouds layer, and then underneath transform, you should see that position has not two, but three different numbers to choose from. The third set of numbers is your Z positioning, and adjusting these numbers will either bring your image closer to or farther away from your theoretical camera. So you're going to need to take into consideration what's making the image move farther away. Is it making the numbers larger, or is it making the numbers smaller? For us, it's making the numbers smaller, and we can see that as we push the image farther away from our theoretical camera, we can see that it's actually sticking a little bit better now that we've moved it farther away. So next what we're going to do is we're going to take this to the extreme. We're going to manually type in an incredibly large number. For us, it's going to be negative one million. 
This will push our image ridiculously far away from our theoretical camera. So far in fact that we lose track of where the image actually ends up. If you scroll out of your work area a little bit, you should be able to find it by looking for the color directional markers. From here, you can actually click and drag it back to the center of your image, and now when we play back, it's sticking so much better than originally. And now here's the last key part before we move on to the next bit. You can increase the scale and position of this clip without losing its proper tracking. If you hold shift while dragging here, you can scale up proportionally and not stretch out your image. You can also click and drag to move it around, and you can also use the shortcut key W to choose the rotation tool so that you can orient your clip in the correct way. Make sure that you can go through the entire clip without the edge coming into frame. Adjust your clip as necessary so that throughout the entirety of your clip, no edges end up coming into frame. And now, this is what we have. It's looking great for now, but let's get really specific. We're now going to select out our original sky and have the new sky showing through for that portion of the clip. There's a lot of ways that you can go about this, but we're going to do this a special way. Raise your clip transparency again back to 100%. Now search for the effect Color Range and drop it onto your footage. Start by selecting this initial eyedropper selection tool and choose a very average part of your sky. Now select the additional dropper tool and continue making selections based on things that haven't quite been keyed out. If it helps, you can hide your clouds layer by deselecting it here. You're definitely going to get some spill, so just try to minimize it as much as you can with these sliders at the bottom. It'll take some trial and error to figure out what the most optimal situation is. Keep in mind that also using the fuzziness slider can help to prevent pixelation and flickering due to the effect. Also, keep in mind that in a real horizon, you'll get some natural fall off where the sky meets the landscape. So, your mask may not have to be completely perfect here depending on the footage that you're working with. So right now, if we turn on our clouds again, we can see that the effect is starting to come together, but it's still really bad at the moment. But don't worry, our cleanup job is actually going to be pretty simple. To start with, let's select our cloud layer and create a simple mask that dips into the mountains here. Also, give it a wide amount of room on the outside of your frame. Great, now we've essentially isolated our clouds to be only showing in this particular region. Next, go to your mask properties and in the dropdown, raise the mask feather a lot. You should start to see it creep into the horizon a bit, and that's okay, that's totally good. But it still looks bad overall, especially being able to see the points that are diselected and just sort of blackish. Here's where a big trick comes into it. We're going to duplicate our normal footage layer, move it down to the bottom, and then remove the color range effect. Now all the areas that didn't get keyed out properly are either covered by the new sky layer or by the backup footage layer. This step is crucial, and it's also what helps you to be able to not necessarily need to have the perfect isolation or the perfect mask. So, let's take a look at what we have so far. This is actually starting to look awesome. We still have a little bit of cleanup to do, but we've already brought it to a level to where it's somewhat believable. Next, we can see that there's areas here that got keyed out in the mountains. Normally, mountains don't have this sky blue top to them, so we're going to move the mask of our cloud layer up a little bit, and then adjust the mask feather even more. Lastly, color correction. We need people to believe that these two elements actually belong in the same world. So you can either adjust the new element to match the footage, you can change the footage to match the new element, or you can have some sort of combination in between. To start off, I'm going to adjust the new element to match our footage. These clouds are a little bit too dark up here, and everything else is really white, so let's do a simple Lumetri color adjustment and try to match our clouds with the rest of the scene. We'll do this by making everything a little bit brighter and getting rid of the really harsh dark areas.
We're also going to make the sky a little bit warmer, as the blue in the sky here is really, really intense. You can also help this out by dropping down the saturation just a tad. And guys, there we have it. We've replaced our sky to make the entire scene feel more amazing. Try this out for yourself with different scenes. Try to make it look realistic, or try to make it look absolutely surreal. Guys, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, consider liking it, subscribing to our channel, or even sharing this video with a fellow video editor friend. We're also stoked to tell you that you can get 20% off your first month with Motion Array just for watching our YouTube videos. Click the link in the description below to take you to your discount. But guys, that's it. Thanks so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.